Starting off. So um, I'm here with John today. So John, when, when was it then you, that you first got the course, man? How long? We've been talking for a few years now, it feels like. Yeah, I think it was back in 13, 12 or 13. Man, so you were like uh, we one got of the originals. Was that back when the course was yeah. on Dropbox? Yeah, yeah, okay. back on Dropbox. Yeah, yeah, you just real, real good. I think it was audio only. I think it was, I just talked into my phone yep. and then you had like a handful of documents. Uh, very nice. Um, were you, yep. uh, so were you running a painting business at the time? Like walk me through what, I know a little bit about what you're doing now, not a lot. So starting from the beginning, sure. man. When you, yeah. So I've been in the construction field for 19 years uh, with kind of my background. My dad ran a apartment complex, like ma property maintenance. Um, so that's kind of how I got my start. And I got in and out of the business for a long time. I didn't know where I wanted to be and what I wanted to do. So um, I dabbled in a bunch of stuff. I was my own IT consultant for some time. Um, I got my computer degree. So I went into that. I completely hated it after a year. I left that. I got thrown into like kind of accidental business with um, making parrot toys. Um, so I was I went full force at that for some time. Um, I was the largest distributor in Florida for Petco, PetSmart, and Petland okay. for about three years. Um, my dad got sick. I moved back to Chicago and was kind of back at that position where I was like, I don't know what I want to do again. <laughs> so um, I started my construction company back up and we were doing, you know, like handyman style stuff. So we did that. I just didn't know where I wanted to be exactly. Yeah. So I was just doing that just to kind of pay bills and, um, after that, I was kind of like, okay, I narrowed it down a little bit and I thought that I was like, okay, I'm going to go painting full force. This was back in 2010 and, uh, a bunch of my investors called me and I was doing their painting originally. They're like, well, can you take on more work? We're having a hard time finding guys I'm like, well, what are you looking for? And you know, I can kind of go from there. Um, I ended up going into my own general contractor, um, licensing and everything like that. So I ran that for eight years. Um, made some really good money. And, um, so in 2012, I was like, you know, I really need to get a new painting was where I made, I would say about 80% of my income, even on the general contractor. Okay. So it's like, you know, I was doing the other things, but it was more just like they were there because they needed it, you know, type yeah. of thing. So most of my profits came from the painting. Um, so in 2012, that's kind of when I started seeing your stuff and we had chatted and uh, I bought the course and then things really went kind of like haywire with my general contracting company and I, remember that. I just went nuts with it and we did in 2016, we actually did 133 homes uh, flipped that year um, as a general contractor. So, and it would just, and that was kind of the camel that broke, you know, the straw that broke the camel's back type of thing. Yeah. Um, so in 2017, I slowed down a lot. I think we did like 50 homes that year. Um, so I was kind of just over it. I wanted to spend more time at home. And then we reconnected in end of 17, early 18. And I said, you know, this is kind of where we're going. Uh, January 1st of 2018, I completely shut down. No, January 2019, I completely shut down my general contract company um, and went forward with the pain. Um, yep. Okay. So, yeah, December 31st, we closed our general contractorship. January 1st, our painting company was back open and we started going forth with that. So, this is August, pretty much August 1st now. Okay. Um, we have, so our location is doing about $17,000 a week in sales. Um, and we also have four other locations, um, that are currently up and running. Um, so we have, we're pretty much covering all of the Western suburbs pretty well. Um, so we have partners on three other locations that are very close friends of ours and family members type of thing. So we're partnering with those on them and we're teaching them what you've taught us and it's been working well. So, um, Two of our locations are running about $10,000 to $12,000 a week. Our fourth location is just starting. So he's running. He was actually a really good friend of mine that uh, we disconnected for quite some time. And he actually seen me back on Facebook through 
one of the like painting groups or something like that. And he sent me a private message. He says, is this the John from high school? And so we were talking back and forth and so we reconnected. It was, it was actually pretty interesting because he ends up, he works for college works. Okay. Um, so I kind of told him what I was doing, but you know, and kind of things evolved a little bit. And uh, he goes, well, would you be interested in partnering with me and doing, doing another location? I said, yeah, absolutely. I said, you know, so he showed me his numbers, what, what he's doing with college works and he did a hundred and I think it was $180,000 in sales in four months um, for them. So, but you know, for them, they only work till August and then they're down. So he goes, well, you know, I really want to go at this full time. I like it. I'm good at it. You know, things like that. He's super awesome with door to door. Um, so we're kind of taking that partnership and going forward. Yes. Um, we're putting him in a location called Oak Park, which is very high end homes. Um, cool. You know, the average job size there is probably about eight or nine thousand um, dollars. So it's a very high end job. Um, so yeah, I mean that's kind of where we're at now. So we've got a total of four locations open now, um, pushing hard, and I'm, we're doing total as a company. We're doing about sixty to eighty thousand dollars a week in sales. Um, the new course has really, I think, changed a lot from what the original one we had taken from you. And um, <laughs> it, it's been good to see those changes too, though. You know, it, it makes everything a little bit better. And, uh, you know, we've kind of put our tweaks on it too. Um, you know, I guess the big thing that we're having a problem with is people having the same closing rates that I have. You know, I can go to, I close about 80% of business. Um, yeah. And it's, it's like that very consistent from January on. I mean, I've never, you know, well, before, pretty much. Before we go to, you know, uh, just a, I have a few questions and then we'll, we'll jump sure. into that because that'll be a good topic, especially with the expansion stuff. Sure, uh, sure. You curious about that? Uh, um, one thing, though, that I think people be interested in is like a lot of, I see a lot of painting contractors get like lured into these other trades, you know, because they're on a project and they start getting mm -hmm. asked, do windows, do this, do that. So you kind of went that route and then kind of came back to all painting. So what was the learning yeah. lesson there for you? Well, the thing that I learned was that painting, you can't go wrong. The, the, the things that can get screwed up on a painting job will cost you very minimal to actually fix. Um, when I was doing a lot of rehabs, you know, you open up a wall or you miscalculate a plumbing job or something else and it costs you a ton you know yeah. whereas with a painting if i have to repaint an entire house i'm still out way less than i would be on if i miscalculated something else or if a plumbing job went wrong and a plumbing bur you know a pipe burst and now i've got to redo half a house yeah um which has happened <laughs> fun so fun. you know i mean i i've seen a lot i've done a lot i've miscalculated roof jobs i've i mean it was a big learning curve for me when I first started because it was just kind of one of those things where he's like, Hey, can you do this? And I'm like, you know, I just took the same properties. I'm like, I'll just sub it out. So right. by the end of my general contractor, I was really what they call a paper GC. Um, I just bring the jobs in, I sub it all out and I manage it. Um, so it's kind of like what we do here. And that's kind of how I started going through. And I'm just like, I was misquoting things and I, a lot of life lessons I've, you know, I've probably lost it, right. It complicates the hell out of the whole thing because now you've got to learn how to bid all these different projects. You basically like, if you've got to learn 20 lessons the hard way in painting, which you mm -hmm. probably do, even if I tell you stuff, people still learn those lessons the hard way. Yeah. Working with a guy right now who's like, you know, learned a really tough lesson. And I'm like, that's why I say don't go into commercial. That's why I say don't chase money because now you're in a pretty big yep. hole. So that kind of stuff happens. But if you got to learn 20 lessons the hard way in painting and you're doing eight trades, you've got 160 hard lessons to learn and that's tough stuff. And then it's even yeah. harder to scale because you got to find someone who can wear that many different hats. And as you right. know, you're seeing, and we'll talk about this on this back end, but you know, how you, how do you get other people to perform as well as you do? And um, right. yeah, that's, that's even tougher when it's a more complicated model. Yeah, you know, and like in 2016, when we did 130 homes, it was, it was hard to find uh, guys, even the guy that was with me, who was my right hand man for, you know, six of those years, 
even him, he couldn't keep up with what I was doing. And it got to the point where I'm like, dude, I need you to step up. You know, I need you. And I kept, I'm like, you know, everything that I know, why aren't you putting those skills to use? You know, you should be managing the same amount of projects. There were times where we had 30 projects going at a time. I couldn't make it to all 30 projects in a week. It was impossible. Yeah. Um, you know, and then to go there and it's like, oh, I got a problem with this. I got a problem with this. You know, I need answers here, here, here. So it was a lot of learning of um, putting systems into place and things like that. So it got better as time went on. But it is. It's a lot of hard lessons, a lot of time lost, a lot of, you know, you, you get a lot of those. And all of those cost you money. They, they do. It's, right. I mean, 2016, I could have probably made an extra million dollars that year if I would have just stuck to painting. Yeah. Um, pretty easily you know i mean it's just the case i think that year alone when i did my profit loss statement i probably lost about 100 grand that year just on you know days laid and all these other you know factors that you know that cost us money so yeah it was it was a hard it was a hard lesson but so um a couple of the questions one one is you know what uh so you've you've been around for a while so you've seen kind of like back when i had like four crummy youtube videos and a dropbox (laughs) course to now I'm like putting all these YouTube videos out. And one thing that I, I think a lot of people are seeing is, and, I, and I've been hearing this, is people are like, oh, I'm not going to get the course. I'm just going to use all these YouTube videos. And I'm like, ooh, you know, it's, it's tough because I, I know I'm putting out really good content on YouTube, but I also know that there's just, man, it's going to take you five to 10 times as long. So I'm curious what your take is on that, like the what's in the course and, and the usefulness of that compared to what's going on YouTube. Well, what the things that I noticed the biggest difference is the amount of detail that goes into the actual course. So the stuff on YouTube is great. I mean, it's, it's the content is very high value there, but it only scratches the surface. Right. Um, because there is so many details to actually learn in this business, and when you start diving into it and really how to how to get the most bang for your buck, how how to get the most money you can out of every job, how to maximize those profits, you know, and those things, that's, that's where the course comes into play. Um, and that's, what's changed mine too. I mean, we, when I first started business, just painting residential repaints, we were averaging about $2 a square foot. So I was probably profiting about 70 to 75 cents a square is about my profit at that point. Now we're getting close to $3 a square foot on a residential repaint and we profit about a dollar 60 yeah. a square. Yeah. Um, so it's really changed because of, you know, the amount of detail that you go through and the amount of how we've changed, how we present our estimates, how we do our proposals, how we do those interviews. Um, and I think it really makes a difference. And I think that's why my close ratio has really gotten as high as it does. Um, yeah. you know, closing a 70 to 80% is, I mean, it's for me now is average, you know, but to my guys, they're like, dude, I don't know how you do it. And right. I'm like, dude, just keep watch, keep pounding this, keep pounding it. You will get it. And, um, uh, you know, and it is, and it's just, you know, I have my sister going through it with me right now and she is just like going through it as in going through the course. Yeah. So I have her going through my end of it and just yeah. kind of watching everything over and over again. And so I went, I have her location right next to mine. My sister is, and I want to kind of use her as like a case study, I guess you want to call it. My sister has zero painting experience, zero everything. Like she doesn't, never done door to door, never done any type of sales, you know? So I'm like, it's perfect. Cause I want to see like, does she see something different than I do? Is it, you know, is it something that I'm doing from previous experience or is this strictly just like straight knowledge that, that we're getting directly from the course? She did it last week. She went out. She sold nine thousand dollars in sales last year or last last week. Um, you know, we're doing all. You know, we're using all of my stuff to actually fund those and and get those things. Right. But it's it truly is. I mean, you can take it from scratch and take Joe Schmo off the street and put him into this, and in a couple of weeks, you can make money. Yeah. And uh, what were the it things? really is? I mean, just the, oh, was that. Nothing. Go ahead. Um, you know, just just the straight the difference of what the course used to be to today is a world of difference. Because I had her watch my old course too, and she's like, "John, I don't get any of this." Because <laughs> yeah. I still have all the Dropbox ones, you know. And she's like, yeah. I, "I don't get it." And I 
she's more visual and she's like, I, I'm just not getting it, you know? So right. it is a world of difference. Um, and the course has made tremendous strides and I mean, I'll what sign up for the next one and all the other courses that come out too. So Sorry, my dog's being noisy. No, no worries. So, um, out of curiosity, obviously you had like a bunch of experience in this whole world before. What were, what, what did it even, what did it provide for you? Like what difference did it make for you? Well, a lot of it was the amount of detail, like, so in our estimating, um, the amount of detail that we talk to the customer about and walk and actually making them walk with us on the, on the estimate so that we, they can see the things that we're seeing. You know, I never did that before. So it's like simple things like that um, or simple things like interacting, you know, with the things around them that, that meant something to them. So having, um, you know, getting that personal relationship to a point on the estimate, you know, well, giving them sales. what to expect. A lot of this, like little nuances and details of the sales process. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and just, just little things that I would, I never thought of before, you know, like detailing out our estimate, our proposals when we give it to them, you know, before it was like paint 1500 square feet, here's your dollar price, you know, you know, whatever it was. Whereas now we're, we're putting all those details that we put in into your estimate. Um, that seems to show a big difference. We just had a customer last week and, you know, same thing. I, and I hear it more and more. I've never got a, an estimate so detailed. She's like, John, your, your estimate was two pages long versus everyone else was like two sentences. You know, and she's like, it's this little half sheet of paper on most of these guys up here. And when they look at ours, it's very professional. It has our logos. Everything's detailed. You know, it, it just makes it look that much cleaner. And then that also, you know, portrays into what the job is going to look like. And I think that makes a big difference to our customers. Yeah, for sure. Um, anything that you have learned in growing these multiple locations, obviously you've been doing this for a long time and then you've been in this business for like seven years, really hard since even getting the course and then starting back up this year. What, uh, what have you learned as far as bringing on partners? Is there any mistakes you've made? Anything you would do different, you know, in terms of like expanding and, and what allowed you to do that? Like just say a little bit, I think a lot of people are like, I have this idea about it. So I'm curious your take on that being six months in and I'll give my take on, you know, expanding locations. Yeah. So, um, one thing I wish I would do more of, and I'm going to start this with the, with the new guy in Oak Park is even though he has experience, I'm actually making them do like, I don't want to call it an internship, but them staying with me and shadowing me for uh, 30 days so that they can actually see my day-to-day -day operations and see exactly what I do on a daily basis and how much control we have over every job site. Even though I have project managers in sight, we have two project managers in our location. Um, and even though I have them monitoring it, I still very closely monitor them and the job sites themselves. They never know when I'm going to pop into a job site or anything. So it's, to me, it's a lot of quality control. Um, and I think that's what makes, our location very highly successful is the fact that the customers know that there's a lot of support there. Um, and I think that's something that taking someone that has no painting experience has a hard time with. So giving them a little bit more background and showing them what to look for and how to look for it and why you look at things a different way. You know, when I walk onto a job site for several different, you know, I carry a little tool pouch with me. It's like, you know, uh, there's a five in one in it. There's a flashlight in it, you know, different things. So that when, when I can see something, cause I can, for the most part, I can see most stuff with the naked eye and they're like, well, I don't see that. You know, I can take my flashlight and point it to the side and they're like, Oh, well now I see it. I'm like, but these are the things that I've grown accustomed to looking for. And most people don't look at that and how to look for those things. Um, so showing them how to pick out certain imperfections that should be fixed and how to, how to look for those things. Um, and it's, it's quick and easy. I, I walk a house in about 15 minutes. So I have, you know, a course that I go through and, and how to do that um, and how to look for those things. So it's something that I'm teaching my project managers so that they can pick out those things for the subcontractors as well. And you said, also make you said you have a course that you, that you go through. I was, Cause my question was going to be, do you have what you do? actually outlined into a standard operating procedure yet? 
We don't. And that's something I'm working on as far as how to walk a house and what to look for and things like that. Um, because I think that is a huge, uh, it's, it's been a huge problem in our market is because yeah. there's so many uh, pop-up contractors that just like, yeah, we can paint, you know, and it's like, right. you have so much of that and they really have zero clue. I mean, I've got pictures of stuff. It was hilarious. We, we started a new subcontractor last week and he's like, yeah, we can paint. So he had a crew, him and two guys. And I'm like, all right, cool. And I'm like, all right, go prep this house. It was a new construction. Like, you know, I'm like, just prep the one room and then I'll check it. I came back an hour later and I'm like, just get off the site. <laughs> it was that bad. I took pictures of it because it was just atrocious. Yeah. I'm like, you know, I was like, if you guys want to learn how to paint, I'll be more than happy to teach you. But this is not the house for you guys to learn on. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and I already had, I already kind of had that intuition type of thing where we kind of knew where it was going. So we have that backup yeah. and we always, we always keep a stash of guys that we can pull from. Yeah. Um, well, so just to, to, to stay on track. So the big thing was, yeah, I would train my, train your new locations more. And yeah. my, my thing is, um, not only would I train my locations a lot more, I'm actually like, Hey, I wish what I would have done instead of expanding is I wish I would have built my first location to 10 million first, because as you grow, you know, there's this illusion. I think a lot of people get into that, like, Oh, I've got this figured out now growing is just, it's just sky's the limit now, but the bigger you get, there's so many new challenges and yeah always these new challenges. Like you don't realize all the challenges are going to be from zero to 10 million until you get there. And yeah, it makes way more sense to duplicate a $10 million model than a one and a half million dollar model. And then I, now I've got 10 companies doing one and a half million with 10 companies with the same bad habits. Not, I don't have 10, but I've got these four. Yeah. I'll have the same bad habits that I've got to like fix the system here and then fix it across three places instead of, so right. Now we're just like, hey, let's just dial in these systems. So, um, you know, I've got a couple of things like I'm adding to the course this week and if, you know, or in the next, I'm filming this week, but I'll add them in the next few weeks. Just from some of the new stuff I'm adding in, I'm not going to put all everything we've done because I've literally spent like hundreds of hours this year on new mm -hmm. SOPs. And we probably went from like a 30, 30 page SOP for production management to maybe 130 um, and just dialing those systems in. So I wish I would have built a better foundation before duplicating and scaling. Like there's just such a, yeah. a drive people have to like want to scale so fast. And I think it undermines your ability to scale actually. Um, yeah, so. it is hard, um, to actually scale when you're, when you're trying to scale four or five companies at the same time. Yeah. Um, so a lot of the complications was actually, monitoring and and seeing where the sales process is going with each person why did someone fall through the cracks why did this happen those things so you know there was a lot that i just didn't think of what you know we've made huge strides with what we're doing as a company overall um you know we just set up a new crm system that is company-wide so all of our crm say it again what are you using hubspot okay so, and I like it. It's, it's very universal. Um, we hired a big marketing team um, who was actually a buddy of mine from high school. He owns his own marketing company. So he's doing all of our new website design. He's rebranded our entire company. Um, so we're doing a big new release this month. We're actually doing a big commercial. Um, did, you, and, did you start Trusty Painter on January 1? Or did you already yeah. have the brand before? Nope. January 1st cool. was the start on it. Started January 1. Since January 1, have grown and added three more locations and now you hit 60 to 80K a, a month. Yep. And, and so a lot of people will be like, wow, I can't believe how quick you grew that. And then what they would look over is like, no, John's been hustling this shit for like 15 years and six years. And like, this is built on so many years of lessons. That's one of the points I'm trying to build it, like really get in with people is that you know, when you get into business for yourself, it's got so much opportunity, but it takes time and patience and you're going to get your ass kicked. It's totally worth it because you're going to get your ass kicked as an employee working 40 to 60 <laughs> hours a week, barely making ends meet anyways, at least this way, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, you know, but it's still, right. you know, you're still going to have to kind of go through that learning curve. So, it's, uh, and it's I, hard. And yeah, go ahead. I think we've grown fast too, because 
we did have a lot of connections already previously um, with us having the background in the general contractorship. A lot of our customers are, you know, investors and, and those type of things. Yeah. We have a very big market in dealing with investors and real estate people and things like that. So a lot of our, our backgrounds come from, or our, our referrals come from realtors and investors and things like that. So yeah. in within, you know, like, in investment homes and, and realtors, we pro that's probably about 50% of our business, um, you know, because that's where I came from. So it was an easy tap for me to go in and say, hey, you know, our company is open, you know, use this for your painting, you know, we'll give you a good deal type of thing. And so all of my investors now, they do their own paint. They don't give it to the general contractor anymore. And we actually paint all of their homes. Um, so it's, you know, making those connections are huge um, and making sure that those customers stay happy because to me is, don't get me wrong, residential is great. I love, I love doing residential and because the money is great. You know, we get a lot yeah. more money there, but my investors, what, what happens when I see there is November, December, January, February, yeah. I no longer have slow months. Those slow months yeah. are now covered by their job sites because They'll, they'll allow them to push, you know, three, four weeks at a time because they'll buy a bunch of homes in, you know, October. They won't need them painted until January, you know. Right. Um, so that well, helps well, our, our down season. And it's right. Well, we'll want to we'll also – I actually just made a note as you were talking about that to circle back with you next month, you know, to talk about that because I think that's a really interesting topic. I have a buddy in mm -hmm. Oregon who kind of does the same thing. You know, he's, he's more commercial stuff, but it's almost all employees for him. And so he can't, when he, his business slows down, he loses all these guys he invested in. And that's a yep. real pain in the ass, that fluctuation of employees. And so he works with a lot of restoration companies and kind of stuff like you're talking about to float that through those winter months. So I think that'll yep. be a really interesting topic to kind of come back to. I do want to spend a few minutes like answering some of your questions, addressing like the sales thing and a couple of things you mentioned. Um, before we transition, is there just anything you would, uh, any, anything else you would say about, uh, uh, painting business pro the course anybody considering it anybody's on the fence because they think they're getting tons of value from YouTube or they're hesitant to pull the trigger anything like that um, I, I feel that everyone's always hesitant hesitant in this world just due to the fact that, that there's so many scams the one thing about this course is it has even though I've been in the business as long as I have it's opened my eyes to a lot of little things that I didn't pay attention to. And I think that's made a huge difference in my bottom line. Um, so at the end of the day, the, you know, you have to invest in yourself. If you don't invest in yourself, good or bad, you'll never know if it's good if you don't try. Um, and I, I think that's across the board, no matter what. I mean, I have bought all types of stuff. I mean, I'll buy painting tools because you just don't know if they work or not. But, you know, we bought one that, reduced our time, you know, by a quarter and it makes a big difference, you know, and it helps your bottom line. Um, so if you don't, if you're not willing to invest in yourself, don't be in business for yourself because it'll just never work. Yeah. Cool, man. Um, all right. So, uh, let's talk about this, this thing about your other people having trouble selling. So I ran into that, uh, not having trouble selling, but having trouble selling as well as you. So, I'm curious what your, your take is on that first, and then I'll, I'll let you know what I've discovered about that. Um, and honestly, I'm not sure. The only thing, you know, I, I've tried watching a few of their, their sales pitches and kind of be like, I was, you know, that trainee on site, whether, why they did their thing. And the only thing I can see is, is that either they're scared to do it in front of me and they're not being themselves, or they're just not being personable to those people and really hitting all of the marks that they should be hitting while they're on the site. Um, so it takes away from the actual estimate process. Um, you know, shorten in time. Um, it, I think it was a collective of those things. So it's like, they're not being personable. So they're not visually and engaging with the customer. They're shortening up their time. Even if it's 10 or 15 minutes, that 10 or 15 minutes may have made a difference in the sales process. Um, you know, and it, it's, you know, sometimes they, they miss certain key points that I would have hit um, that they're not hitting. So, you know, and it, sometimes it's a collective of those. Sometimes it's just one or two. Um, so I, I'm not exactly sure why it's, it's that way. I, I don't know if maybe a different market or, you know, things like that, but, um, 
or if it, even if it's just the clientele. Um, I, 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 really would, say. I would, uh, I would say 100% is not the clientele or market. Maybe like a smidge, but most of it's not going to be that because I think if you went into those houses or you went into that market, you would your sale your sales rate wouldn't change much. Mm-hmm. Unless, you know, it, so we got to compare apples to apples. If you're talking like you've got an 80% sales rate with repeat clients and they've got a 40% sales rate with new clients, that's not apples to apples. But if you are comparing that, right. then if you're comparing apples to apples, I think your sales rate wouldn't change based on market or clientele. I think you'd probably still be pretty good at those. So mm-hmm. there was a point where our, our, well, the first thing is I think most people don't See that the hardest part of the building and scaling this comp- this business and any business is building teams to be really really effective, um, and figuring out how to duplicate my own effectiveness and figuring out how to get that skill down is like wildly valuable. It's just really 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 hard, you know, to get yeah. good at that one. Um, and so the the thing I think most people do is they end up getting lucky once in a while with a natural. Um, I've had like maybe one or two naturals before, you know, it's it's very rare. You know, my, my former business partner, we sold the business, but his name is Brock. I'm good friends with him still. We were down in Tulsa. Um, he moved back to Tulsa after being our marketing manager and started a company with us down there. And I never trained him anything on sales. He sold 60% for the life of his company. I didn't never even talked about sales. He's just a natural, you know, so they're, they're, something to be said about the right personality type that there are people who selling is just what they do They're, That's just in there. That's just how they are naturally. And so I'm going to be implementing right. and investing a ton of money into personality testing to identify those people when I'm in the recruiting process. So that's one yeah. aspect is like, it's who you're hiring and you can go the other way too, man. Some people just do not belong in sales. You know, it's just not where they belong. Right. Well, that's one aspect for sure. And you have, you know, more of a sales demeanor. And then you've got all, so that's the first thing. But the second thing is you've got so much experience that you don't even know how much you know. There are things where you zig and they zag because of something you learned like a decade ago. And you aren't teaching it to them because it's, so, it's the, so much the water you swim in that you don't even think to teach it to them. And so that's right. kind of been the challenge for me in the last year and a half. And we've gotten our, our company sales rates up to about 45, 44, 45% um, up from maybe 28 years ago as, as averages, which is really solid. i um, really happy with those numbers. Mm-hmm, yeah. But, um, you know, our best people, yeah, we'll sell 60, 70, 70%, something like that. Um, and one of the things I noticed is at one point, and this might give you something to look at, but I noticed that um, the people with the highest sales rates were the business owners. And they all of a sudden had higher sales rates when they became business owners. So Alyssa is one of my partners, Hunter's another partner. They did sales at Foothills and then they branched off and started their own company. And all of a sudden, once it was their company, their sales rates leaped. And it was like, what is that about? And I'm like, there must be something that these business owners do that we're not training non-business owners to do. And so we started to kind of like inquire into that and kind of just try to discover what was going on there. And there are a couple things they were doing. One was they don't over promise. They under promise. They're like, dude, I've got to deliver on this. Like, I'm not going to tell you that's going to look good if it's going to look like shit when we're done. Right. So they literally will tell clients, like, honestly, like, I can do that. It's going to look like crap, though. And a salesperson will be like, oh, yeah, we can do that. It's going to look great. And so underselling is something top salespeople do. And Mm -hmm. so we started to really look and see what is John doing differently at these estimates than these guys are doing. And you just keep getting your eyes on it. And it just takes time, you know. And that's one of those things where I think, uh, this might have been an email today or the other day or it's coming up or something, but I'm talking about, oh no, I think I'm going to shoot a YouTube video about it. But I'm like, dude, you got to lower your expectations for growth because things are going to take so much longer than you think. You know, mm-hmm. figuring out how to get other people to sell at 50% is just going to take so much longer than you think. Cause it's just such a tough yeah. thing. Even if I was like, even if I was in there working with you side by side, it's so hard to, to, to get people there and to develop that skill. 
but you know, after a couple of years getting those, you know, when you can get guys consistently to 50%, man, that's going to skyrocket that business. So those right. are kind of my three things is one is the person you hire and the personality type is a big piece Two is there is just something you're actually doing differently from them that you're not training and you don't even realize you're not training and you just got to look closer and just keep getting right. your eyes on it. And then three is just keep, just be patient with like, this is a whole new world to be in because the direction you're going is like multiple locations and then scaling those locations. You're talking about building an organization with, you know, 30 to 50 to hundred to 300, 400 employees. You know, this is the game for John in the next decade is mastering training people and then mastering training people to train people. So you just got to immerse yourself right. into that game. Um, and it'll just take some time because I've been in that game for a while and it's, it's just, it's just tough, man. It's just tough. It's yeah. just a lot of looking and learning. Yeah. I mean, I think even your course has taught me a lot of that too. And, and cause even in your course, it was a lot of things that I just, I never paid attention to because it was just, it was just there in the background, you know, this type of thing. It's like, Oh yeah, I know I got to do that, but I never mentioned it to the customer. And yeah. that's what really changed my actual, my pitches, you know, is like, Oh, well, I need to point these things out to them because they may not see that. They may not know how complicated it is. They may not understand what has to go into that in order to actually make that look right. Whereas to us, it was like, Oh yeah, you know, it's just this, this, and this, you know, to us, it's, you know, it's, it's a standard thing, you know? And, uh, and I think that made a big difference in my sales processes. Um, I had one lady tell me, she goes, she goes, John, your the, your attention to detail is exactly where I want it. She goes, nobody else pointed out some of these things. Right. I mean, this house was a 6,000 square foot home. It was multi-million dollar home. I mean, and so I'm walking through and it was just simple stuff and I didn't think anything of it, but taking your course, I knew I should have mentioned it. And I'm right. like, Oh, well, you know, I could see some rippling here that, you know, where the tape's separating, you know, this is rippling because, you know, you've had some thinking in the home. I know that it's thinking from the home, from my general contractor. Right. And, you know, so some of those things that it, it comes from an experience and you may not know that, but you know, it's, it's some of the things that I think um, I should be training my people on too is, you know, why do some of these things happen? You know, where you see that wrinkling in the tape, in the corners of the tape, it's because of the house thinking. You yeah. know, you, you don't get that any other reason, um, you know, or simple things like, you know, someone painted this house before she bought it. And, and I just, I literally just rubbed the trim and the paint came off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, do you understand what this happens? Like, do you understand why this is doing this? She goes, no. I'm like, the oil, the paint underneath this is oil based and they put latex on top of it. I'm like, all of this has to be stripped. I'm like, there's no way that there's no way to go about it. I'm like, I could put another coat of paint on it, but it's still going to peel off. Right. You know, well, I was like, a couple you things like latex over oil. A couple of things I'd recommend, man, is number one, start a document where you start capturing all these things that you're mentioning. Like it, have it be a document that's just called paint tech or something. Ours is called what we do and what yep. we don't do. And it's like paint tech basis, 23 pages long and counting. And it's all these right. tiny little details, right? Do we, what, what do we do about outlet covers when we're doing interior? Do we take them off or not? And why? Um, what do we yep. do about picture frames on the walls? Do we take them down or yes or no? How much if, and why? And if we do, how do we bid it? And what do we do about storm windows? And what do we, all these little details, why is there a tape and, and take a snap a picture of it, throw it in your document, put a little note about it and start documenting that because that'll become part of your standard operating procedure. Cause that is something in John said that needs to get out of John's head and do a procedure. So that'd be one suggestion. Then two is I know you signed up for the sales mastery thing. If you can get um, one or two of your people to go through that and, and even get them on the, make sure to get them on the webinar to work with me, you can see how okay. I'm going to pick their sales apart and what you might, and, and you'll start to be like, Oh shit, that's what I was missing when I was coaching them on sales. Nice. Okay. Right. Cause we've done like, so far we've done initial call pre-close um, need satisfaction selling yeah. cycle. We're going to get into personality selling. Then we're going to get into closing. Then we're going to get into diagnosing, then some advanced stuff. And if they can go through those webinars, start applying those things, showing up to the calls and, and working with me on it, I'll pick their sales apart, man. Okay. So cool. I would definitely utilize that. Cause that'll be a, a that'll be I think really useful for you. All right. Yeah, for sure.
Cool. Um, great, man. Well, anything else? No, um, just picking up our marketing. We're, we're really going to start our hit our online marketing pretty hard. Yep. So we've hired this company that, uh, is, like I said, revamping our, I mean, he's just set up HubSpot, which is a big marketing CRM, um, which will actually flow. So anytime we do a big marketing campaign, it'll actually assign a new phone number that'll track everything. Yep. So we'll see exactly what they do, how they do it, how far they go. Um, our website now has a online quote estimator that's pretty accurate. Um, that's been, I had to put together 180 calculations that, you know, depending on what they pick will depend on how it goes and yeah. things like that. So that, that was a, a long journey. <laughs> I believe so. Um, so that was kind of cool to go through that and really see that and break that down. Um, that was interesting. Um, so we're going through all that. Um, we're, we're doing a lot of Facebook stuff now. Um, you know, I, I got to get on, you know, just videotaping and, you know, the whole marketing, uh, the, what I'm learning about marketing and how the internet works and how <laughs> YouTube affects Google and Google text, you know, affects Facebook and Facebook affects Instagram and all these things and how they're all interconnected and how that actually makes you rank as a company. I, it's just amazing how all this goes together. And he's like, yeah, you just got to do this, this, and this. And bam, there you go. You're the first one on Google. And I'm like, I would have never figured that out. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, you know, and I think one thing. Uh-oh. I might have just lost you, John. I learned about. Are you still there? Hold on. I'm losing you. Okay, got it. Sorry, right. I'm gonna try to call in. Oh, okay, great. Um, so you're back. So one, one thing. thing I, yeah, one thing I learned because doing real estate investing is learning how to market and building that team. Building your team is the most important thing. You can't do it all. Yeah. You just can't. So one thing my mentor told me for real estate investing, he's like, John, you're good at what you do. Manage the job. Let everybody else do their part. Hire your attorney, hire your accounting, hire your, you know, your realtor, you know, let them do their job because that's what they're good at. Yeah. Um, so that's, I'm kind of taking the same thing into this and saying, okay, you know, let my project manager do his, let my marketing guy do his, let the sales guy do his, you know, at the same time, you know, my marketing team, let them do that marketing because that's what they're good at. Let them figure it out. Um, you tell me what I need to do on my end to make sure that your job goes smooth. And that's what I'm providing. Um, so I think it's, you know, it's good. And that's what a lot of people have to learn is that being a business owner is great, but in order to really do it, you have to have a team behind you that you can support because if you're not supporting that team, you'll get nowhere and you'll always be a one man show. Well, and the one caveat I'd add to it is, and if you try to jump the gun and build a team before you know what you're doing, that's going to backfire too. You know, you obviously had a right. lot of experience with what you're doing before you even brought that team on and you built teams and probably gone through lots of struggles along the way, like most of us did. But um, I, I totally agree, man. So, well, dude, let's, let's definitely follow up uh, on, on some of this other stuff. You know, there's something I wanted to mention when you, when you were talking about like invest, invest in the course, invest in yourself. It's like, man, this isn't even like a, because I know everything. I don't know much. I mean, I think, you know, everything you, you could put together everything, you know, around investing and real estate and working with investors and commercial and that winter time. And that would be worth a bunch of money to me. You know, it's like, how do we put that kind of information together? You know, everyone has like all this stuff they've learned from so much different background. And if you can tap in to other people's experience that, you've been learning that world of investors in real estate and flips and all that stuff for literally over a decade. Like mm -hmm. if I had the opportunity to tap into what you know, that took you a decade to learn and you could distill it down to me in, in a five hours of training. Holy shit, man, I can get a decade worth of experience in five hours. Sign me up, yep. you know? And so that's what we'll check back right. in on, man. Cause I think, uh, yeah. there might be some, you know, there's a bunch of other people in the course who are doing some pretty cool stuff too. Did you see Rich's interview? I did not yet, no. 
Oh, dude. I, I saw the email come through that I've got to get on there and look at it. So. He's doing some super interesting stuff with like commercial and stuff like that. A bunch of people are interested in what he's doing. I am too. So there's a lot of, uh, I'm, I'm curious about how I might be able to pool together, you know, a lot of people's unique experiences to, you know, just add more value yeah. to the whole, the whole thing. So anyways, we'll follow For up sure. uh, in September or something about that. And then in the meantime, man, like hopefully we'll see you or, or your guys on that sales mastery stuff. And, I'll work yeah, with yeah we'll, I'll be on the next one. Cool, man. Yeah, not a lot of people. I mean, there's people showing up, but a lot of people aren't doing enough estimates that they're like, they're not taking a ton of coaching. So I only worked with one person one on one on the last call. So if you pop okay, in, cool. I'll, I'll definitely yeah, uh, I'll, be in your team. Yeah, I missed the last one. I was out out of town, so couldn't make it. But uh, yeah, I'll get on the next one. We'll, I'll bring some of my sales team and uh, get them on there and have them work through with it. Oh, yeah, man. All right, John, dude, it was good talking with you, man. Thanks for popping on. I'll let you get back to, to your busy day. Kicking ass, man. All right. Appreciate it. All right. Later, dude. Later. Bye.